Crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this week we are going to be a little, doing a little bit more sewing and I just love this project. So years ago my aunt made me one of these and I've always wanted to reproduce it. So of course I went out and did some research, see how everybody else is making it, put my own little twist on it, had my original one to kind of look at and these, I think, are just going to make great gifts for the holidays, for a birthday, um, for a shower gift. I mean, all kinds of things you can do with them. And so what they are is they are a jewelry pouch. And they are so fun to make. And what is really cool about them um, is that they've got all kinds of little pouches inside. And so you guys can see that there are little pouches in there that you can add your jewelry for. So it's super easy to make. I'm gonna show you how to make a pattern. It's basically circles. And I'll show you how I make those circles and I'll show you how to put it all together. So give me a second and get, get my camera and they'll change. I'm gonna join you right back here at my pressing pad and my cutting station. And I'll show you how to make that pattern and then we will put it all together. So hey, before we get there though, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. Try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So give me a second, get my camera angle changed and we are gonna get making these cute little jewelry pouches. Okay, so let's get going on this project. So I just absolutely love these cute little jewelry pouches. And as I mentioned earlier, my aunt made one for me years ago and I just absolutely love to use it. I especially like to use it when I'm traveling. You can just cinch everything right up. And I love that it's got the individual little pockets in it. So you can keep everything nice and organized. Now this one, I used using an outdoor fabric on the outside and then on the inside I used two different types of um, a cotton fabric and so that is an idea that you can do. This one I use all cotton fabric and one of the reasons why I like the outdoor one is it's got a little bit more form to it I believe. So if I were to stick with the cotton fabric, I would probably add in some interfacing. But I just love using the outdoor fabric. So to get started with this project, I want to show you how to create the pattern for it. So what this project takes is um, some circles. And so what I like to do is I like to just start with a 12 by 12 sheet of um, cardstock. And I like to use the cardstock because it gives me, um, it's a little bit um, stronger than paper. And I've already cut some out and I'm just gonna show you how I created these circles. Um, so you are going to, we are gonna end up creating a 14 inch circle. We're gonna do an 11 inch circle and we're gonna do a four inch circle. So couple ways that you can do with your circles. Now, some of you may recognize this from school, um, being a compass, and this compass helps make circles. Now, the only drawback to it is, is how big the circles can be. So let's start out with, um, and I'm just using my mat here just so I can make um, some little notations of my distance. So since my first circle is gonna be four inches, I'm just gonna do a quarter of that circle just to make it easier. And so I need to do it at two inches. So I'm gonna take and mark two inches and two inches. Okay, and then I'm gonna move around and I am going to mark five and a half and five and a half. Now why I'm doing that is because our next circle is 11 inches. So one, two, three, four, five and a half. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and a half. Then I'm gonna come all the way to the other side for the uh, the 14 inch one. So that one I need seven. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I've got markings now. So let's start with the compass and just show you how easy it is. I wish this compass opened up enough to do all my circles because it's so much easier. So you just place it in the corner. I've already got it split that it's at two inches and you can see that. And I'm just gonna very carefully put it in its place and I'm going to draw my quarter of a circle. So let's get this out to be right at my five and a half. And look at that. There, I've got that one perfect. Now, the challenge I have is this will not open for me to do my seven inch or my 14 inch circle. So what I need to do is I'm going to take just a standard ruler. And let me just use my regular ruler here. And I'm going to go at seven inches and I am just going to make marks all the way. And we are just going to hand draw um, this circle. And so just do it as many times as you want, just to make sure that when we go to draw our line, that we're comfortable that we're getting a good circle. So you can definitely do this with the smaller circle too. Um, I just wanted to show you how you could use that compass also for it. So for this one, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and there, I've got my circle. So now I have got my three pattern pieces that I need. So just to save some time, I want to show you, I've already cut them out because I had done them earlier. I always like to label, okay? So this is for a jewelry pouch, and this is my 14 inch, it's going to be, and I'm gonna cut two. And I'm gonna place this on the fold and this on the fold. So I'll show you how we fold our fabric so we get our full circle out. Same thing with this one, this is our 11 inch circle. We're gonna cut two, and we're on the fold and on the fold. This little guy, is going to be out of foam for our base. And so it's just a cut one and it's a four inch circle and it's still on the fold. Although I find that the foam being this small is a little bit harder to fold. So I'll show you how we get that one done. So that is how we put our pattern together. So now let's talk about what fabric we need. So I went to my stash and I'm making this one for a Christmas gift. Um, somebody in my family loves green, and so I am making one for her. And so what I did is I've got two fat quarters here, and then I went into my stash um, for some um, outdoor fabric. So I'm hoping that I can get um, what I need out of the outdoor fabric on those 14-inch um, circles. So let's start with that first, since that's going to be my largest one. So I'm gonna cut, now let's look at what Lisa did here, just so you guys understand what I'm saying here. I did one 14 inch circle out of the outdoor fabric, and I did one 11 inch out of the outdoor fabric, and then one 11 inch out of the cotton, and one 14 inch out of the cotton, okay? So I want to do out of my outdoor fabric, I am gonna end up cutting a 14 inch circle, and an 11 inch circle, okay? So let's see if we've got enough fabric. That's one thing whenever you're using scraps, you always got, um, you've always got to make sure that you've got enough. So how we want to do this is, I'm gonna take my pattern piece, and let's get the 14 inch one first, and I am going to fold it in half first. Okay, and I'm going to make sure, and I like to conserve enough of my fabric as I can, so I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And I just want to make sure, see how I've got that? I wanna save as much fabric as I can. So I just like to make sure I can bring it down even a little bit more. And there we are, we're nice and close there for how our fabric's gonna be. Now let me grab my scissors out. Just to help me, I'm gonna cut off that salvage piece. 
So I don't take the chance of having that be part of what I cut. Now, remember on the pattern piece, I've got a fold here and a fold here. So what I wanna do now is I wanna fold this fabric over. And so I have got a fold on this side and I've got a fold on this side, okay? And then I'm just gonna do that exact same thing and see how I have a little bit of extra here. I just wanna get as much out of this as I can. So again, I'm just bringing that right in there. And there we have it. So let's cut our first circle. Now, you guys might wanna add some clips here and let me just add a few. And that way we'll make sure our circle doesn't move. I love you using the cardstock though too, because this is a pattern that I can see remaking over and over again. So there I've got it clipped and I wanna make sure I'm not cutting the um, paper with my sewing scissors. But I just wanna show you that now, if I open this back up, the way we folded it, we now have a 14 inch circle. So look at that, just by using a quarter of the pattern, we were able to get a full one in. So now let's do the exact same thing and let's grab our 11 inch circle and we will do the same thing. I like to trim off these little pieces here. I might use those as scraps for something, but it just helps um, when I'm folding again. So now I want to do the exact same thing we did before. Let's conserve as much fabric as we can. And so we're going to bring that back up. That's nice and tight. And I can feel the end is right there. I'm going to fold this over to about right there. I'm going to make sure I've got a fold here. I've got a fold here. And that's how I've got my pattern pieces laying also. And so I'm going to add my little clips here. And we're going to cut that one out. So easy as that, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and cut another 14 inch circle and another 11 inch circle. But this time I'm going to be using that cotton fabric for it. So what you wanna decide here is which one you want showing the most, right? So this is where it comes fun, kind of playing with your fabrics. Cause this of course is gonna be your outside. This is going to be the inside biggest piece, but what color do you want showing? Do you want something like that or so something like that? I like the contrast of this one. So I'm gonna make this one be the 14 inch circle. So. I've got the flat fold and, and you guys will notice that I did not have this fabric washed at all. I am just taking it straight from how I bought it. Don't normally wash my jewelry pouches and so I thought why take the time to wash the material. Now you may feel like you want to do that and that's totally your call. I'm just letting you know that I did not. So I'm doing the exact same process here Folding it over, making sure I have my folds, putting my pattern piece in, and clipping it, and we're going to cut this one out. So we need a total of um, four circles um, out of material. Again, if you want to use cotton for the whole thing, you definitely can. I just have chose to use the outdoor fabric because I just really like the feel of it. But you guys decide what you want. I just want to show you how easy these are. And I think these will make great gifts for people. In fact, I am going to make them for my daughter-in-law and my future daughter-in-law. We've got a wedding coming up in the family soon. And got a wedding coming up in the family soon. 
And so I am going to be fortunate to have two great daughter-in-laws. So let's see. I think this will just make great little gifts. I know I use mine all the time. In fact, my girlfriend's birthday is tomorrow, and I've already made her one. Um, and so just lots of fun. The other thing is, is if you guys have seen my makeup pouches, um, this is another idea. Makeup pouches I used outdoor fabric. And so this is, you could make some coordinating ones, which would be really fun too. So now, once I have this one cut, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our stabilization foam and we are going to cut that middle circle. So let's review what we've got so far, just to make sure we're all on the same page. I have got two 14 inch circles and this is how mine is going to go together. Get the iron out there and do some pressing here in a minute. So there are my two 14 inch circles and then I have got a 11 inch circle and I have got another 14 inch circle. So those are our fabric pieces. So now what I'm gonna do is I once again am gonna go into my scraps and I am gonna grab out some of my stabilization foam. And you can see I've cut many things out of this before. So what I want to do is I'm gonna take this little four inch circle. Now for this one, what I would recommend that we do, because it's harder to do on the fold, is let's get to a side of my foam. And what we're gonna do is you can use a disappearing pen or you can just use a regular pen. This um, foam is gonna be totally covered up, but what I like to do is just trace it out. And I find that that is just as easy. So I'm doing a quarter at a time, I'm just rolling it over, and I am coming up with my full circle this way. And then we'll cut it out. Now this stabilization foam does have an adhesive on it, um, which I really like because it will um, iron right in. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut this, and this is going to be the base of our jewelry pouch. And it's really a fun product to use. I use it when I do bags or when I do big baskets. Um, and so that's why I've got a little stash of it. So we have got everything together from a material standpoint. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna move my cutting um, mat out of the way and move my pattern pieces out of the way just for a second. And I wanna give my fabric a nice press. Now I am using my pressing pad and if you haven't seen that pattern, I do have a pattern on how I made this. I've made a few of them now, but I just love having this right next to my sewing machine. It just works out so nice. So I'm just gonna give this all a good press. You definitely could have pressed your fabric before you started. Um, in fact, normally I would have, just so I could have precise cuts. But the way this one cinches up, if we were a little bit off in our um, little bit off in our circle, we're just going to be perfectly fine. Okay, so now before we start sewing anything, what we need to do is, if you guys noticed, I have a grommet. Um, this is called a grommet. I have a grommet here. Now, I've seen some people do buttonholes, which you definitely could do, but I just really like the grommet, and I really like how it just adds strength to it, right? It, nothing's going to pull through it, and it's not going to rip. So what we want to do is we want to figure out the placement of our grommet. So the grommet is only going to go on the outside fabric, and you may not have noticed, but my pattern piece I had marked one inch in, so this is one inch in where this little circle is. And so I, again, I'm just gonna use a regular pen, you guys, because we're gonna cut a hole, and I am just gonna mark 
with a pen. And then I'm gonna come over here and I am going to do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna mark with a pen that little circle. That's where we are gonna put our little grommet. So for the grommet, I picked up, um, these are actually eyelets that I'm using for these ones. I still call them grommets, but they're eyelets and I've got a little eyelet tool for it. So I'm gonna need those. There are two sides that you need. One is a little bit lo longer and then so this is the, the actual front part, and then this is the back part. So I'll show you how those go together. And then what we're also gonna need is a hammer. I have just, and you can see I've done a few, I've got this, this piece of wood that I keep handy. So I've got that close by. And what I have found to start my fabric hole is I'm just using a good old um, paper punch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in where I put that at and I am going to start a hole for my grommet. Okay, so now I have got my two holes for my grommet. So this comes with a little setter tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this upside down so good fabric is down. I'm gonna put my little setting tool. I'm going to put my, the, the, um, the, eyelet piece that is the um, the thickest and oh, if they call that um, let's see so this is the eyelet and this is the eyelet cover so you can see the difference there so I'm going to put that one upside down on my little setting tool and I'm going to poke it through my hole I'm going to just trim that little piece off I'm gonna poke that right through the hole. Okay, so that's showing through. And then I'm gonna put the cover over the top, just like that. We're gonna do the setting tool and we're gonna put that right in the middle and I'm gonna take my hammer. And I'm gonna hammer it a few times and look how beautiful that turned out. So we'll do the exact same thing. Hammer and there we go. We've got both of our eyelets, or if it's a larger size, it's considered a grommet. You guys can see in these ones, I actually used a grommet. This is an eyelet. So either one will work. So let me get that put away, and then we get to start doing a little bit of sewing. So let's get the hammer out of the way, the hole punch out of the way. Now, what we're going to do first is we are going to work on our um, big one first. So for whatever reason, that didn't take a good press. So let me just iron that one more time. So a trick I learned, and I love this idea. I don't know how many times you guys have ever tried to sew a circle and then where you leave a gap to turn it inside out, it just doesn't curve right. So what we're going to do in this process is we are actually going to sew all the way around our circle. Now, that might sound kind of funny. You might say, okay, Lisa, you can do that, but how are you gonna turn it inside out? So the way we're gonna turn it inside out is we are gonna slit a hole right in the middle and we're gonna do it on the cotton side or the inside fabric. And the reason why we're going to do that is twofold. One, so we can turn our fabric right side out, but also one of our next steps is to place this inside. And so that base will be able to slip right inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop over the sewing machine and I am just going to do a quarter inch seam all the way around. So the entire circle is gonna be sewn in. So I'm just gonna hop over the sewing machine and do that. One thing I wanna make sure you guys be careful of is, and it might be a good idea to do it this way facing up, is you wanna make sure you do your quarter inch seam. You don't wanna hit your needle or your foot, of course, on your eyelet or your grommet that you have put in. So quarter inch seam all the way around. 
Okay, so I've sewn all the way around the circle. And one of the things I wanna do is I just wanna clip just like every two to three inches. Now I am using my Ginger shears and they have a blunt edge right there. What I like about that is I can make sure that I am not clipping through my stitch. So I can do that blunt edge right up to my stitching line and it is not gonna cut through. So I just do a few of those. Now, I wanna make sure that I'm hitting the center with my slit. So I'm gonna fold this in half and I'm gonna fold it in half again. And I am just gonna take my iron and I am gonna give it a good, good press. That way I know exactly where the center is because that is also where we wanna put this at. And so I'm gonna open it up and I am gonna take my scissors and I am only going to, you wanna make sure you take these apart, you only wanna cut through the cotton. And so I'm going to fold that and I am gonna do a snip and then I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna do a snip the other way. Okay, so I have got this hole right now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this inside out and any of you guys that have watched any of my sewing videos you will be not be surprised to know that I've got my clover turner that I absolutely love to use. So what I'm doing is just kind of with my fingers, I'm pulling this all out. And then I'm gonna take my clover and I'm just gonna push out. And then we're gonna take the iron and give this a nice, nice press. And see what I mean by, I've got a nice circle all the way around because I don't have to close off and end it all. And so this just works out so nice. I'm gonna add just a little bit more water to my iron here, just so I can get a little bit of steam off. I find that whenever I'm pressing like this and I want it to turn out nice, that a little bit of steam definitely helps out. And there we have it. We've got our first circle put together. And our next step we're gonna do is we are gonna go over to the sewing machine and I am going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way around. So I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam right here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure in with my foot and we are going to sew right here. And it's right about an inch in but you can judge it depending on the type of eyelet or the grommet you use is what you wanna look at. What we're creating there is the channel that I have here, the channel that our ribbon is going to go through. So quarter inch seam first, um, and then we want to come about an inch from that seam. Now, really tricky here to make sure that you get this um, with your foot, be really careful going around right there. So let's hop over to the sewing machine and let's get that part done. Okay, so we're here at the sewing machine and I am actually going to use my um, sewing foot as my guide. So I'm starting where my eyelid is and I'm putting my foot right next to it. So it's right at a quarter inch seam. So I'm gonna do a stitch and then I'm gonna do a little back stitch and then we're just gonna go all the way around and just making sure that it's a consistent quarter inch seam. Okay, so I've got that first one done. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna bring over my foot and I'm gonna put it down right next to my grommet. I am gonna move my needle to the middle position 
And if I were to grab my ruler, I will tell you that I am coming in right at about an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth is what I'm coming in. So what I wanna do is once I placed it, I'm finding the spot on my foot of my sewing machine. Let me bring you guys over a little bit closer there. The foot of my sewing machine, and I'm gonna use this as my guide as I go all the way around. Got you guys back in place and we'll just start that sewing. Okay, so the first thing I always like to do is clip my threads. So I wanna get those. One of the things I ran into when I was working with the black fabric is it was really hard to see the threads. Now, one thing I should have shown you guys over at the sewing machine, I did use a cream colored thread in my needle and I used a dark color thread in my bobbin. That way you really don't see that, that sewing there. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to place our center. So what I like to do here is I'm trying to find exactly where that center is so I can fold it like that, or we can grab our fabric piece, excuse me, our pattern piece, and we can put our bullseye right there. That way we know when we put this in, we, the way we cut our circle or our opening, we know that that is the center, okay? So let's just slide this guy in. And just got to work it a little bit here. And we want to get to where as close as we can, we have got that little dot I made right in the center. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I've got it right in there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take my iron. Now, one thing you could do just to make sure is you can use your ruler and you can see right close to five inches, right at five, right at five, and right at five. So I know I have it centered. So you can definitely do that too if you wanna just double check it. And then what we're gonna do is just take our iron and remember I told you this was an adhesive um, foam um, stabilizer. And so I am just pressing it right in place. So it's not going to go anywhere for us. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to set this guy off to the side. And we need to work on our 11 inch circle. So the 11 inch goes a little bit faster. We don't have any grommets to do. We're gonna do the exact same process of sewing around the entire circle. We are gonna make a slit in the cotton piece because when we turn this, that will be facing this and you'll never see it. So I'm gonna hop over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna do that quarter inch seam the exact same way I did on the other one and then I will join you guys right back and we're getting really close on this project. Okay, we're gonna do just like we did on the other one. We're gonna make a few snips just around the circle. And if you're not using blunt nose scissors, be very careful not to cut your stitching. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do just like we did before. We wanna find that center and I just find this is the easiest way to do it. I definitely could do my pattern piece with it again, but I just find it's easier to do it this way. And then that way I know exactly where I can snip. Same thing here. We wanna make sure that we only do the cotton fabric. Or if you guys are using all cotton, this is gonna be the inside piece. And so I am doing a snip and then I am doing another snip. Now, the size of your snip, you don't want to be more than a four inch circle because that's what's gonna cover everything. So we're gonna turn this one inside out. And I'm gonna do just like I did before. You can do this 
this a couple different ways. I'm gonna grab my fabric pin just because I find that it is easy when I get ready to sew. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a quick little press there and we are gonna take our fabric pin because this is where we're going to be sewing to create our little pockets. So if I do a line there, and then if I just press that, press that, and then maybe make my line a little bit better. And I'm just gonna use these as go sewing guides now this is definitely an erasable pen. So what happens is once I'm done, I can put the iron on it and my ink will disappear. Okay, so I'm gonna use those as guides for my sewing. Now what we wanna do is we want to center this up on our other piece. And you can use the guide of this seam. You can also take your ruler and you are right at about an inch and a half in. And that will make sure that you are centered. And we are an inch and a half in all the way around. Now at this point in time, I love my clips, but I find that it's much easier to grab a pin at this point in time. And I'm just gonna pin this in place. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and I am just going to start at here and I'm gonna start and back stitch, reinforce, come all the way down, reinforce. Then I'm gonna do this line, I'm gonna do this, and I'm just gonna do every one of those lines, okay? So I will be right back and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I have got all of my seams sewn and I'm gonna remove my pins. And then we are going to give this a good press, get rid of all of those pen marks that I just put in. And now this is also where we wanna make sure we go in and clip. You're gonna have a thread at the end of each one of those rows. And make sure you turn it over and do the same thing. got rid of all of our threads and now what we're gonna do is we are going to add our ribbon okay so we are going to measure out some ribbon and we are going to add that so the size that you want your ribbon to be I have found that about 33 inches is what has been working for me the distance of the ribbon that I'm gonna use. Now, you guys might decide you wanna do it a little bit differently. I just find that this pulls through really nice. Now, the other thing you guys may have noticed on mine is I have liked adding a little bead to the end. I just think it makes it nice to pull it. And then sometimes what I do, especially if I'm traveling, is I will tie my bag up and then I've just got those beads right there. And so if I'm traveling, this is how I kind of store my bag. So I just think those beads add a little bit. So what you wanna do is you want to grab a safety pin. Now, one thing you wanna make sure is, is that your safety pin is going to fit through your grommet, right? And my safety pin I normally use is not going to. So I am going to grab a smaller safety pin. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go all the way around with the ribbon, pull out this side. Then we're gonna go all the way around with the ribbon and pull out that side. That's what makes it a drawstring bag, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. And you guys, I'm gonna fast forward through this part because it takes just a little bit of time, especially using a smaller safety pin. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on this end and we are gonna go all the way around. And there we have it. I now have got both of my drawstrings in and look at this. 
our bag is done. Get these little scrap pieces out of the way and let's take a look at how cute that drawstring turned out. So we open it up and we have got all of our little pockets that we can put all of our jewelry into and it's not going to get lost. You can put earrings in one, bracelet, necklace, and then your bigger stiff right in the middle and you are just going to pull that tight and like I say, when I travel, I always like to just tie mine around a little bit, add a little bow on it, and there we have it. So cute. Just love how these have all turned out. I've made three of them so far, and I just love how each and every one of them has turned out. So I hope you like this Inspiration Friday. I will give you a close-up view of these with some trinkets put inside of them so you can see how easy they are to um, to organize and if you like this project give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe and share it with your friends